Man did not weave the web of life. Man is but a single strand in the web of life. Whatever he does to the web, he does to himself. All things are connected. Everything we get comes from the land. All up and down the coast, there's places like this, pristine, untouched. We're just so blessed to be able to still have this. The Great Bear Rainforest is the area of the north and central coasts of British Columbia. It extends virtually from Vancouver Island almost to the Alaskan border. This is the largest tract of intact temperate rainforest in the world. It's why people are so connected to it. It's why people are so emotional about it. And I believe it's what's motivated these 50 artists uh, to come up and, and contribute their talent and their work to try and interpret this and explain to Canadians why this is so important. You could just feel the energy in this wonderful places and here in Kainok is uh, very magical and I feel it when I travel to these different places on the coast because it's, uh, it's where my soul's been for thousands of years and where my people have been and you know, we have this great opportunity now to educate and teach the world about the values we have here. So this is the story of that expedition, organized by Rain Coast, taking 50 artists up into the Great Bear Rainforest as they attempt to absorb and interpret the beauty of this place. It's unbelievable that a community of, of artists this large gets together in one small spot like this so that the rest of the country will be as aware of what we think in BC and what we value and what's here. So that's your job over the next little while is to interpret that and to try and express what you feel about this place. Yeah, I think by actually getting here firsthand and seeing the area, it's it's a real huge eye opener because you can actually look on the on the charts and you can see where where they're thinking of bringing the tankers in, and you really get a chance to see how fragile and just catastrophic it would be to the environment here um, if they were to even think about bringing tankers through this coastline. Enbridge has proposed to build a pipeline from Bruderheim, Alberta, uh, through two mountain ranges to the coast of British Columbia. And this diluted bitumen or tar would be loaded into huge tankers and transported uh, through the British Columbia coast and off to offshore markets. I've never considered myself an environmentalist. I was pretty busy trying to make a living and raising kids. You know, a, a quote comes to me and I don't know who said it, but evil prevails when good men do nothing. I'm not calling myself good or even all these artists good, but once you know um, what's at stake, um, to turn your back on it, for me, at least, is impossible. I've been changed. There's a little piece of it there. Mm -hmm. 
our, our world as we know it is shrinking and places like this are diminishing. And we can't allow that to happen. Didn't know such uh, exquisite and vast wilderness existed. And I didn't understand um, how high the risk was for an oil spill. Everything is so interconnected and that balance between land and sea, that thin little edge habitat layer is, it is so fragile. And if we were to cover that little line with oil, it would just wipe this area out. This is so important to me. I think maybe the scoters in my painting are what brought me here. And this is an opportunity to try to throw something into the pot to say that oil and this coast will not mix. This is my office. This is my life. This is my subject. This is what I respond to. This is what gets me up in the morning. And it's important for all of humanity to have places like this. I'm required to be here. If there's an opportunity to stand up for what you believe in, I'm, I'm obligated. <laughs> Me personally, uh, I suppose my involvement with this project could alienate potential clients uh, to some extent. I hope it wouldn't. I hope they would understand that um, this is something that simply needs to be done. Uh, when I'm home, I live in Langley. Um, British Columbia, but I live about four months of my year in the wilderness, painting. We need to realize that this is a delicate place, and perhaps that's the best word. It's a delicate place. It's a place uh, that we have to stand up for. It's a place that doesn't speak well of itself. It, it, we, need to, we need to speak for it, um, because it's so hidden. It, it's, it's, it's so vulnerable. So much of this story is about the people who live here and the potential effects on their lives and livelihood. I mean, any fool looking at a map can see that sailing a tanker in here is a very stupid thing to do. I mean, the sea lanes are so narrow, the tides are so strange. It's just asking for an accident to happen. And a, an accident in these waters takes away these people's future. And if there were to be a spill here, their lives would be eradicated. Their lifestyle would be gone overnight. I spent 35 years sailing this coast. I understand the hazards of this coast, their navigational, their weather, and their human. All of those hazards are uh, combining uh, with great force here in this place. It's a place that has a history of many, many shipwrecks. It's a, a place that has a, a, a lot of natural hazards. You combine that with the inevitability of human failing, which has happened everywhere this has taken place in the world. Um, it's inevitable. This is their route over here. Look at these rocks. Oh, oh. Nine feet, 18 feet, Jenyan rock, 27 feet. And with that single little decision, missing that turret or hitting that, our entire coastline is done. 
it was worth stopping here at Gill Island where the uh, Queen of the North ran aground and uh, hit these rocks right here, scraped up against it, and sadly um, sank. It's this, look at how jagged this coastline is, right? You, you come up against this and you're gonna rip a hole in these things and just start belching out this awful crew. They could throw all the money they want at this, but there's no way um, our community would support it. If you look at the Exxon Valdez and you look at BC Ferry, it was human error. It's just, it's not worth it for us, so. We're at this important stage in life. We're right on the brink of breaking Mother Earth. And we're at a critical stage where we got to stand up at, to protect this and uh, that's what we're doing as artists. We're fighting. These, these, are, these are our tools, our weapons to save the coast. I'm going to carve a portrait mask. It is uh, old growth western red cedar and it smells like it, it just smells so good. And I'm going to be carving an ancestor. The ancestor will represent the ones who've been here since time began in their mythology stories. Ultimately, it represents the ancestor we all descend from. Throughout the ages, artists have always uh, been the teachers, have tried to communicate to the society that they live in um, what we should be doing or what we should not be doing. And so I, I feel that my role as an artist, whatever that is, is to use my voice. Art is a language. It's an attempt to say something. And and we know that as a language, it can often be much more effective than words. I've always think that art has been um, sort of integral to show people different opinions and sort of bring people that won't get the opportunity to come into the area. By showing our personal take here, and this is sort of one of the most special places in the world, still untouched and raw, but so essential. Right now is the time when we wake up and start paying attention to what we are actually doing. I've always said we can do whatever we want. The question is, what do we want to do? And uh, we need a new definition of progress, you know, toward uh, listening to scientists and, and toward elegance and, and beauty. So we have to get our philosophy right. What way do we want to go forward? And we need a critical mass of people who care deeply in their hearts about nature. And I think that's partly what we're all about here. What, what I think is happening is what one writer calls the dialogue of the deaf. Everybody's speaking and nobody's listening. And I, I, I fear that nobody's listening to us. This can't happen here. Just can't happen here. I, I would rather be a spirit that that people remember than a person who would sit back and watch ignorant people damage the land of my ancestors and our home and native land.
so to be in a place that you know is the way it was when our First Nations ancestors were here and then when it was just the Garden of Eden before that is a wonderful thing that one can't do very many places in the world anymore. But we should be doing whatever we can to protect our natural heritage because it's so precious in the 21st century. The real problems facing the planet are not economic and they're not technical, they're philosophical. And I think now we're, we're going to have to start looking at permanence. Uh, this, this way of life that we've had in the 20th century and we're starting in the 21st century is not here forever. If you're doing a cost-benefit analysis, the benefits are small and temporary. The risks are enormous and permanent. Um, so whatever small benefits there are in the short term are far, far and away offset by the potential, well, the inevitable long-term damage. If you look at all the different people all over the world, it doesn't matter what color your skin is, you still have a heart and a soul. And everyone that travels through here, at one point, they live just like how we live. Everyone's First Nations from somewhere. And that's what this ancestor is gonna represent, that human family that travels through, and that human family that's standing up to fight for, for this, for this, to stay so it can contain its energy and keep on giving medicine back to the people who travel. I'm going to start crying. It is the most beautiful place I've ever experienced. And to have it here in uh, the province that I live in, it's, it's, this is not like anywhere else that I have ever been and today we saw a grizzly bear you know you don't see that everywhere we saw humpback whales today these creatures these animals have no voice they don't get to stand up and say this is wrong what you're doing They don't have a voice. We have to speak for them, and that's why I'm here today. If we care about the people around us, if we care about the generations to come, then we must stand and protect what we have. You know, I don't have a lot of power, but what I have, if I can use it to help even just a little bit, I have to do that. And if we all do that little bit, maybe in the end it will count for a great deal. Probably in the biggest fight ever, and as uh, as a heat jog person, man, we've been fighting since 1700s. But this is the ultimate. This is the ultimate battle, and this is this is it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. We have to win. small 
desire to be in you Inside your reflection like the man in the moon I painted your portrait and I'm high on the fuse Salt of all oceans, the taste of your skin Afraid to drown, but faith to swim You swept me off the ground even before I jumped in Never have I loved like this Pelican's wingtip responds to the sea An inch from the swell flying harmony With careful abandon, your 